Hey everyone, welcome to Liz Ho Show. Crafting one project at a time, not two, not three, but one because that's all I got. And today we are showing you how to make this Marauder's Map card. And you're kind of looking at it and you're like, it's all right. I mean, like you probably could have taken a better photo of it. Let's be real, what's so magical about it? Oh wait, it's all bananas. It lights up and you see hidden footprints like a real Marauder's Map. And obviously when you press the castle, you also have to say, I'm solemnly swear I'm up to new good. Using some heavy cardstock, this piece is cut to 11 by four and a quarter inch, scored in the middle. And you'll need two more pieces of cardstock cut to five and a half to four and a four quarter piece, one quarter piece. And copy and typing paper, Thin paper, that's all we're asking for. Cut to five and a half by four and a quarter. One to stamp in color and one to use as a mask with a two inch square cut out in the middle. Next, you're going to need some red cardstock cut to five and a half by four and a quarter to make a quarter inch frame. You will also need this magical piece of vellum and these magical powder tools. Actually, you only need one of the powder tools. I don't know why I showed both. I'm also using Distressed Oxide in Fossilized Amber and Distressed Ink in Fired Brick and a blending tool. Versifying Black Ink will also be joining us as well as Clear Embossing Powder and Gold. I just forgot to show it, sorry. And this Chibi Lights Kit, which includes copper wire, batteries, lights, and this magical book with instructions. And let me tell you, if I can figure this out, you can do this. My dog could do this. My dog is pretty dumb. He doesn't know where I throw stuff sometimes. Okay, adhesive, scissors, gray markers. I use Copics, a sketching pen, and a bone folder, followed by foam tape, a paper trimmer, a heat tool, and a die cut machine. But honestly, you could just use an X-Acto knife and a nickel or a quarter. You'll see what I mean. The stamps we're using are by Sweet Stamp Shop, including Wizards, Royal Wish, that castle looks bomb, and Magical Friends. I don't know what that accent was. I'm sorry if I offended anyone. That was just weird. I'm using the small circle die, but again, like I said, you could use a nickel or a quarter and an X-Acto knife. You'll see what I mean when we get to that part. Starting with our thin typing paper. I'm taking the paper that I want to color on. I am lightly adhering it down onto my uh, craft mat with washi tape, and I'm taking the first mask and lightly adhering that on top of the mat. Now, I'm not good at blending. I don't know why I had to like pause and like gather my strength to tell you that, but I'm not good at it. You're going to see it's not, it's not going to look pretty, but it is a map that has been weathered. So I thought, you know what? It doesn't matter if I blend well, because it's just going to look how it's going to look because it's a map that's been in wizard's pockets. Plus that mask with the crisp lines make it look dope. Next, I'm taking Distress Oxide Ink in Fossilized Amber and using uh, the square mask with a little bit of repositionable glue, and I'm just placing that on top of the red square that we just made. Using some post-it tape, I'm putting it on my fingers so that my oily little digits don't lift up any of the paint that I'm blending down on here. Now, honestly, you don't have to use Distress Oxide. You could use watercolors, you could use colored pencils, it's all the same. Doesn't that look nice? It does. But the cool thing about distress inks and oxides are you can spray water on them and then this cool stuff happens. But then it was like a little intense, so I had to use some more fossilized amber. To me, I was like, whoa, 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 hold on. Calm it down. Next, we're going on to my sentiments. I have a piece of vellum. I used my powder tool and the sentiments from Magical Friends. Magical Friends. I don't know why I keep on saying that. Using Versifying Black Ink, stamping that on down. Now, I use the powder tool so that the embossing powder only sticks to the ink because, trust me, I've tried it where I didn't use it and embossing powder got everywhere. I am using my heat tool and warming it up nice and hot before it hits the vellum since the vellum is so thin, I don't want to burn it. Ooh, pretty, nice and shiny and raised. I'm using my paper trimmer to trim these little guys in two banners and I wish I could craft this fast in real life. Now I'm using scissors to make sure that the banners both end up being about the same length. And I'm going to cut a slit down the middle and then from the two corners, cut towards that slit to make this little V. See, you can do that. I remember when I learned how to do that and I was like, oh my gosh, where has this been my whole life? I thought you had to do like a magical punching tool. Nope. Now I'm folding the V inwards towards the sentiment and then folding it outwards so you get a little dimension and the banners look really cool. Perhaps banners like 
ones that you might see in a magical school, like Hogwarts. Girl, fix that. That looks weird. Fix it. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Now using one of our panels of cardstock, I'm using the circle die because I'm trying to figure out where I want the footsteps to appear on my map. Now I'm going to take the circle die, run it through my die cut machine, and voila, we have a circle. Now let's say you're like, I don't have a die cut machine. No problem. You just need to get a nickel or a quarter, whatever fits, and outline it with a pencil and then cut it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. No one's going to ever see this backing piece. This will go behind the panel that we just uh, colored. Now I'm using the next piece of cardstock that will be our circuit board and I'm tracing the circles. So that is where I'm going to want the lights. And then my camera battery died. Don't be scared. This is what happened while this happened happened. <laughs> the Distress Oxide piece got all dry and I used some stamps from Magical Friends and Wizards to kind of add elements to my uh, Marauder's map. Now I was really particular in where I placed these elements because I wanted to make sure that the owl, the hat, the wand, and the broom did not block where the footsteps were going to be lit up. So I just stamped those down and now using the Castle from Royal Wishes and my Versafine uh, ink pad, I'm going to, yep, ink it up, girl. Get a nice strong impression and press it on downtown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, ah. So we're taking our circuit board piece. Well, that goes over and dries. And we see where our three circles are. That's where our lights are going to live. Now, I want to show you something very quickly. This is what I call a pocket. I'm making a pocket for our battery out of scrap cardstock. It doesn't have to look pretty. It's just what's going to hold our battery and be where uh, people are going to press to make the lights light up. And on that, I'm marking a negative and a positive side. So whatever side of paper it touches the battery, that is where it's going to be. I also wanted to show you close up that the bottom of the triangle, you see the positive sign and the top of the triangle is a negative sign. That's important. You just need to match up positive to positives and negatives to negatives. Now I'm placing where I want the pocket to be. I want when people, the recipient touches the card, when they press on the castle, it lights up. So I'm gonna use my pencil to mar mark where I want the little pocket to be and using some strong tape, but honestly, you could use liquid adhesive if you wanted to. I'm going to tape down that uh, little pocket just to make sure it doesn't move. And now I'm gonna struggle with the tape. That's good, that's really sexy. Struggling with tape on camera. Why did I leave that in? <laughs> so that's where the battery is going to live. Now, some people do it different ways, but this is how I like to set up my circuit. I like to set it up where I lightly, very lightly put the stickers down so I can see where to place my copper tape. What I wanna do is I wanna have all the positives facing the inside. Next, I'm taking a long length of the copper tape and I'm cutting it in half. What's really cool about cutting it in half is it actually gives you more flexibility because the tape is thinner. And then I acted like a cat because meow. Now, don't be scared of copper tape. It's just like washi tape or blue tape or scotch tape. It's just tape. And I'm going to make sure I get a wide swatch of that down on my pocket and I'm just gonna flip it over. And if you wanna make a corner, which is what I'm gonna do, the best way to explain it is you go the opposite, you bend the opposite direction you want the tape to go. So I bent it up so I could go down. Now I'm lifting up my little battery and placing it right underneath it. Now watch, I'm lifting it down to go up. Does that make sense? If you get the copper tape, you'll know what I mean. It's very flexible and very forgiving. And again, I picked up my little light and now I'm pressing it down. And again, I went in the opposite way. I wanna go up, so I'm gonna bend the tape downwards and then move it up towards the positive side. And I'm gonna rip it. See, it's so easy. It's like washi, you can just rip it. Now what do you do? Oh, it's negative time. So again, I wanna put a large bit of copper tape down on the negative side so we get as much surface area touching the battery. And again, I'm gonna make a corner. And now all you have to do is just line it up so it hits the negative parts of the little chibi lights. So I'm gonna take up that battery and I'm gonna use my bone folder. Honestly, you don't need a bone folder. You could use a ruler, you could use your nail, you could use 
really you could just use your fingernail and just make sure everything is pressed super flat down onto the surface of the cardstock. I ran out of tape, doesn't matter. You add more tape, all that has to happen is the copper just has to cross. It has to touch, it has to be nice and cozy with the other piece and you'll be fine. And I'm going to go ahead and bring it on up to that last light. That's right. And see, look, I forgot to even burnish it down with my bone folder. But I'm going now and I'm making sure everything is nice and flat. You want it as adhered to the paper as possible. You add your battery. Oh my God. Oh, light. I know it's sexy. It, I literally could not stop playing with it. It was so much fun. Next, I'm taking some phone tape and I'm actually going to triple this phone tape up. I'm gonna take another piece of phone tape. There are three layers of phone tape and I'm going to make sure that that battery does not move. I'm basically walling that battery in. So phone tape, boom. Phone tape, boom. Yes, I put it on top of the copper tape. It's fine. It will not mess with the circuitry. And okay, I noticed that I, I wanted I want it when the little pockets closed. I didn't want it to actually touch the battery and drain it, so I added another piece. So there's four pieces of foam tape. Yes, 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 yes. And now through the magic of editing, I have added a buttload of foam tape to the back of this, and it's all four layers of foam tape. So now I'm taking the little punch board that we made, and I'm writing top. I'm gonna make sure that it lines up, and I'm gonna make sure the top is pasted onto the top of there. By pasted, I mean I drew circles. I don't know what I'm doing, but basically I drew circles. Why? Because I want to make sure I stamp on my distressed ink piece where the footsteps are gonna light up on the back of it. I know it's weird, trust me, it works. You just put the little footsteps where you want them to be. So cute. Now, here we go. I'm taking my thin, fine tipped sketch pen. This one is by Copic, but honestly, you could use any thin pen. And I was looking at a picture of the Marauders map online, and I noticed there were a lot of cool, small, kind of like sketchy map details, and so I wanted to add that to the castle. So all I did, honestly, was draw a line down the turrets, and then horizontal lines. And I added little windows, and I added a little shading, and I'm not very good at dimensional stuff, but that's what happens. And I took a Sharpie, and I filled in the little entrance, and now, on the original Marauders map, it's all words, right? Well, girlfriend, I cannot make pretty lettering happen. I'm not a Christina Warner, but I am good at dotting. So I took uh, some gray Copics. I believe they're uh, Warm 9 and Warm 7. Um, and I just kind of made little paths. And then I also used um, Warm 3. But honestly, you could use colored pencils, you could use uh, Crayola markers, whatever you got on hand. And again, I added more sketch details to like the owl, the hat, the broom, and not the wand, because the wand, the wand is fine. Now look, I'm taking the top, I'm adding adhesive to the top, with the part that I said top on, and I'm adhering it to the Distress Oxide piece, and I'm cutting off the excess because apparently I don't know how to cut five and a half by four and a quarter. Okay, here comes the moment of truth. You're lifting up all the paper on the foam tape, and I'm gonna place it down. Ready? Did you see that? Did you see that? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's magical. Guess what time it is? It's sentiment time. I'm taking my vellum sentiments with some Tombow uh, mono adhesive, which is basically just liquid glue. And what's really cool about these folded uh, vellum sentiments is you can hide the glue in the double vellum part where you folded it back onto itself so it doesn't show. Ooh, magic. And I'm making sure I'm placing it in a place where it doesn't block our little light up footsteps. Next, this is where I'm using the red frame. I like using a frame on this card because the typing paper is pretty thin and it kind of looks a little janky if you just leave the edge. Gonna be real with y'all. 
So that's why I like using this frame with some liquid adhesive. It just finishes the card. Now we look nice. It's a nice, it's a nice card. You can take it to meet your mom. And I wanted sparkles, so I used a little bit of clear Wink Estella and a little glitter gel pen to add a wee bit more magic. Now, the inside of the card needs to be magical too. I'm using uh, Memento Tuxedo black ink and my footsteps from Wizarding Friends. Wait, Magical Friends, there it is. And I'm adding more footsteps. I'm using the sentiments from Wizards, Believe in Magic. I'm using my powder tool because I'm using VersaFine, no, VersaMark uh, watermark ink, which is a clear sticky ink so that I can make it gold because magic should be gold. It should be sparkly and as gold as possible. Melting the embossing powder with my heat tool, and I dipped those footsteps one more time in the ink, but now I'm not dipping them again because I want the footsteps to magically fade out. Oh, get ready. Yeah, I adhered the top panel to our little folding panel, but watch out, I solemnly swear I'm up to no good. Show me how to get out of Hogwarts. Na 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 Magical card times. Guys, I hope you had a good time making this card. I had a great time sharing this experience with you and I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Go out, craft some stuff, and I will see y'all later. Bye!